Jesus, they <laughs> love getting me <laughs> the Brett Ehrlich chosen B-roll, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, unless you're a billionaire, there's not a great chance that you're gonna be going to Mars anytime soon. But there might be something pretty close if you want a bit of the experience of exploring the red planet. There is the Mars Desert Research Station, which a nonprofit, the Mars Society is running. We can show you pictures of this little outpost that they've put together to help learn a little bit about some of the things that might affect the eventual colonists of Mars. You can see them, there's a picture of the Hab and them wandering around with space suits. And we even have a photo of the interior of one of these buildings we can show you. Doesn't look that bad. It's yeah, actually that pretty actually high looks, ceilings. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's actually. not that bad. Anyway, um, anyone can apparently sign up for this. Uh, you do have to go through an application process. Bear in mind that Elon Musk has contributed money to this, so there's a chance that it'll all fall apart and everyone involved will die somehow. Anyway, um, there is uh, member dues, donations. That's basically how they've put together the funding to run this thing. But why? Why are they doing this? Well. Their goals of the Mars Society are both scientific and psychological. We know that to send people to Mars is gonna be incredibly taxing in a number of different ways with a lot of potential dangers. Those dangers will exist not only once the settlers get there and are living on Mars, but on the trip over. In both cases, they're gonna be living in very close quarters for long periods of time. And so we need as much information as possible about what that would actually look like and how we can minimize the psychological damage that might happen. So. Basically, the people who sign up, the crew members, are the research subjects in this. They might be doing studies too, but they're kind of the most important part of it. Um, for two to three weeks, they live like Martians. They wake each morning in bedrooms slightly larger than coffins. They gather in a small common area to eat breakfast, usually a surprisingly edible meal, we're told by the Guardian, made with dehydrated food, bacteria cultures, and harvested greenhouse plants, and watch the sunrise through portholes. Each crew member is allotted one 90 second shower every three days. So the tight quarters could get a bit pungent perhaps. But anyway, everything is very small. It is designed for the living spaces and the areas they'll be working in to be about the scale that you would expect on Mars. So everything is as tight as possible because every pound that you have to put into orbit is incredibly expensive. So we have more details about this and some of the situations that have come up in their testing that they've done. but. You buying this, would you spend two to three weeks there? So, uh, well, it, it looks like I'm not gonna have a choice because you said every pound they send into orbit is quite expensive. So it doesn't look like I'm going anytime soon. <laughs> You're gonna be like, no, no, we're gonna go, we're gonna go with someone else, okay? <laughs> and uh, so here are the great number of places they lost me. Any one of these would have done it. Mm -hmm. Well, you're gonna sleep in something that looks like a coffin. Okay, yeah, let's pack our bags, <laughs> okay? In Turkish- You don't have vampire fantasies? Yeah, nope. Uh, there's a there's a couple of things in Turkish uh, for when something's done. Close the book and you drink a cold glass of water. Okay, it's two <laughs> different sayings, but we say it anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then when they're like, oh, but the good news is the food we make from the bacteria cultures is surprisingly edible. Close the book, <laughs> cold glass of water, <laughs> we're done with it. No, but don't worry, you can take what was it a 90 second 90 shower? second shower 90 second shower every three days. Everybody else on the trip, close the book. <laughs> Glass of water would jank? No. Okay. Well, there's a good reason. I mean, if you, if you were to interrupt more than every three days, there's not enough time for the bacteria cultures to grow on all of the participants. Ah, uh, good point. Good point. Uh, no, my interest in this is it borders zero percent. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad that somebody's doing it. I like science. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like tacos, uh, and so I'm pro science. I'm glad that we're getting that information. Uh, I I could not have any less interest. The only is, thing that got me interested was the second picture. So if we could put up the second picture that we were showing mm -hmm. uh, from their experiments. I was like, oh, it looks like the uh, practice for the Arizona Cardinals. And uh, maybe that's kind of a little bit interesting. <laughs> uh, but other than that, no. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my real question is, since you're a, a fan of this kind of nonsense, uh, would that's you be, me. would you be, would you yeah, do this? I think this is easy, two to three weeks, that's like nothing. I was on that well, damn ship in the Arctic for more than two to three weeks, and it was pretty tight quarters. I didn't get to walk around on the ground and everything. I don't think this would be too tough. If it was a nine month trip to Mars, and then you're there for two years or plausibly the rest of your life, and then nine months back, if they were trying to make it super realistic in terms of the timeline, I don't know that I could do it because I, I do think that I would lose my mind. I think that I would actually go crazy. And you would, you would lose your mind. 
Has I think it? so. I okay. would want to do it. There's all sorts of things about space travel that I would love to do. I love Star Trek and Star Wars and all that, but the reality is is not great. It's really tight. Someone once said that um, you should check all of your optimism about what it would be like to live on Mars because in the best case scenario, it would be like living in an airport. And in the worst case scenario, it would be like living in an airplane. And neither of those are great. Yeah, no, no, look, I like I, the idea. I, first of all, you said like, hey, it's just two to three weeks. And I thought, that's two to three weeks, I'll never get back. <laughs> so no, not at all interested. Um, but when you talk about nine months and then two years and then nine months to get back, Oh, I, I have no, no interest, no interest, zero percent. Like, so Elon Musk is like, oh yeah, well, I'm going to build uh, rockets to get off the planet, or how about we fix the planet? Mm -hmm. uh, because this planet is like for us since we evolved here. It's not that the planet is made for us; we're made for the planet, mm -hmm. literally, literally. Okay, because of evolution. Yeah. If you go to a different planet where we did not evolve, it will be inhospitable, mm -hmm. and we already know how inhospitable Mars is. If you're Having to move to planet B, things went terribly awry. And that is not a good situation for anybody. Yeah. And brother, that ain't Star Trek, okay? <laughs> uh, there's no Counselor Troy, there's no holodeck. I can't give you one. Oh, give me a holodeck, I'll go to space. <laughs> now I don't mind the nine months and the two years, etc. right? Take a hollow shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Well, there'd be a lot, kind of, a lot of different showers uh, in that situation. What are you I using mean, no, no, the not for? Me. For? Not for me. New York oh Times, don't write God. it. Don't write it, New York Times. <laughs> We're learning so much <laughs> and not just about Mars. <laughs> so, what's, no, I've always said, once there's holodecks, people will do the craziest the end things of society in there. If holodecks ever I come. mean, now, nobody's ever going to talk to each other again. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, so. Uh, no, I don't know why anybody would go through that pain. I mean, why why do you even care about being in space? Like like it's kind of cool to see the view for a second to float. It's a kind of cool. okay to float, although what you can about do that here. The, anyone who goes to Mars be in the history books for the rest of the time. What about that? Oh, you couldn't care less. No? No, 0%. Mm -hmm. uh, here are a couple of reasons why. Um number 1, the history books are irrelevant. Once you die, you don't exist. Uh, so it doesn't matter at all that you're in the history books because you literally don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't take pride in something when you don't exist. Well, okay. well but that's that's a reason to not do anything, to not take pride no. in anything. Then no, no, you like do it for its own sake to help others because mm -hmm. you like it, etc. But this whole idea of legacy. I got really bad news for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like all the presidents and stuff. Like Barack Obama was obsessed with oh, my legacy. You don't exist. It doesn't matter what your legacy is because you cannot experience it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay, that's a tangent. Uh, no, uh, if we have to do it, I guess I'll do it. If we, if you make holodecks, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. If it's comfortable, I'll do it. But I have no interest in being over the top uncomfortable for several years or even several weeks just to be in space. No. Yeah. No. Well, um, if you would like a chance and if you change your mind, uh, career applications for the 22 to 23 field season are closed, but for uh, 2023 to 24, still open. You can potentially go have a little bit of fun. Can I read one fun little anecdote yeah, before we end? So uh, they do these little tests where they, you've seen this in a lot of movies where they like throw curveballs at them, make them simulate things. In a common scenario, some astronauts are contaminated by radiation while outside the station. Their comrades inside have to decide whether to let them in. During one such simulation, a contaminated woman pleaded to be let inside, but another crew member, who was also her actual husband, voted to let her die, arguing that it was necessary to protect the rest of the crew. The simulation supervisor praised the husband's choice. No word on whether the marriage survived. <laughs> At the very least, it might be a bit radioactive. Oh, <laughs> they have a bit of a toxic relationship. Uh, we're here all week. <laughs> okay. By the way, I wouldn't have let her in. Um, no, yeah, no, never. Yeah. But what's the point? Like people always get weirdly emotional. If you let her in, you all die. So mm -hmm. what did you accomplish? Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be the radioactivity. It's small quarters. I want more room to stretch out. I'm not letting you back in. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Day one, I push everyone out of the hab, close the door. I can stretch out and take all of their showers. Now it's a real science fiction movie. There okay, you go. That's what happens in every science fiction movie. <laughs> and that's why they won't let me go. Also, I want to go to space. Movies. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I would do. I'd be like, oh yeah, we're doing a mission to Mars. Trump, Alex Jones, all of you get inside. Elon Musk.
Do you it. Yeah, be oh, the yeah, first. Yeah. No, no, you'll be back probably in four years. You'll be all right. <laughs> I want to go to space. <laughs> oh no! If you get in a space shuttle, a, a capsule with Alex Jones, that dude has talked way too much about cannibalism for you to have any chance of getting out of that thing. He is uh, definitely eating everyone. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.